What's up everyone, today we're gonna cover the portable executable file format or in short PE. It is used in Windows operating system for executables, DLLs and object code. It basically encapsulates all the information that Windows Loader needs to manage the wrapped executable code. And in the end of this video I'm gonna show you a program called Parser that allows you to extract all of the valuable information from .exe files. So let's start with a general overview of PE file format. From the top you can see we have a DOS header, DOS stub, then goes anti-signature, file header and optional header. Those three are also referred to as anti-headers. Next comes section table, which holds a header for each section in the file. And I'm gonna cover what a section is later in this video. And of course all of the other elements are gonna be covered as well. And if you are interested only in a particular one, Check out the timestamp in the description and just skip to this part. The first header is DOS header, nowadays used for backwards compatibility as modern Windows systems use PE file format. This is how the structure of a DOS header looks like. The first member, which is called a magic number, is of type word, which means its size is 2 bytes, and it is used to identify the file type. On the screen right now you can see the value for executable, and here are some more values for other common uh, file types. The DOS header is no longer integral to the operation of Windows executables, so when the system is executing the file, it recognizes the header and looks at its last member, LFA new. This member holds an offset value, pointing to the PE file header within the file. We're gonna talk about this header later in this video. The next thing is the DOS stub. This is a little program that just prints a message, this program cannot be run in DOS mode. It runs when you try to run your program that is designed for modern system in a DOS environment and it is sort of like a backup code and what's cool about it is that it can be altered. You can specify your own stub in linker options but I'm not gonna cover that in this video. The next three headers, as I mentioned before, are all wrapped inside one structure that is called image anti-headers. The first member is a signature, it is sort of like a magic number but it is 4 bytes in size. Next we have a file header that I mentioned before and optional headers. The structure itself comes in two versions, one is 42-bit and the other one is 64-bit. As you can see, the size of optional header changes. Uh, but for now, let's focus on file header. Machine is 2 bytes in size and specifies the CPU architecture for which the executable file is intended. Number of sections indicates the number of sections that makes up the executable file. Again, what section is we're gonna cover later in this video. Time, time uh, date stamp tells us the date and time when the file was created. Pointer to symbol table, historically used for debugging information. Nowadays, it's typically set to zero. Uh, as well as number of symbols, also zero. Uh, size of optional header specifies the size of the next structure, which is optional header. Characteristics contains flags that provide important information about the nature and attributes of the executable. For example, the flag image file executable image indicates that the file is an executable image. It distinguishes executable file from DLLs or static libraries. If you want to see more flags, uh, look up image file header structure in Microsoft documentation, link in the description. Now we move to the structure with the most members and because of its size I'm gonna cover only the essential stuff and if you want to know the rest please refer to the documentation. Image optional header structure starts with a member named magic which tells us uh, with which format we are dealing with. As I said before it can be either 32-bit or 64-bit. Major linker version and minor linker version indicate the version of linker used to build an executable. It helps determine the compatibility and understand the toolchain. Size of code, pretty self-explanatory. It specifies the size of the code section within the executable file. Uh, size of initialized data and size of uninitialized data indicate the size of initialized and uninitialized uh, data. It helps with managing memory allocation. Now, entry of uh, address of entry point, sorry, specifies the relative virtual address of the entry point function, or basically the starting point of execution. Now, for those of you who don't know what a relative virtual address is, it's just an offset from the base address, which is where the PE file was loaded, to a certain location in memory where a certain item is. 
Let's see an example. Let's say virtual address and base address are equal to the values that you can see on the screen. To calculate relative virtual address, you just want to subtract the base address from virtual address. You do it like this and you end up with relative virtual address. Base of code and base of data, they provide information on starting addresses of code and data sections within memory. Section alignment and file alignment determines how sections are aligned in memory and in the file. They ensure efficient memory access and file reading. Image base specifies the preferred base address where the executable should be loaded into memory. It helps preventing uh, address conflicts. Subsystem specifies the subsystem. Example, Windows GUI, console or POSIX, under which the executable operates. For console apps, it would be image subsystem Windows CUI and for GUI apps, it will be image subsystem Windows GUI. Major operating system version and minor operating system version indicates the minimum version of the operating system required to run the executable. And I know it's a lot of knowledge to take at once, but stick with me, we are close to the end. Let's move to sections. Sections are blocks of code or data that serve specific purpose. The most common you can see on the screen right now, along with their short description, but you can also create your own custom sections. So just keep in mind that the ones that you see on the screen aren't the only ones that exist. Each section has its header that describes this section, and all the headers are in a section table. The first member is the name of the section. Uh, then we have misc, which is a union that can hold either physical address used in object files to denote the physical location, or virtual size that specifies the total size of the section uh, when loaded into memory. Virtual address holds the RVA uh, where the section will be loaded in memory. Size of raw data is the size of section uh, data on disk. Pointer to raw data is the file offset where the section's data begins. Pointer to relocations is the file offset of the relocation entries for the section. Pointer to linear number, uh, po sorry, pointer to the uh, line numbers uh, is the file offset uh, of the line number entries of the section. And then you have number of relocations, which is just the number of uh, relocation entries and the number of line numbers, which is the number of uh, line number entries. The last four are relevant only to object files and for executables are generally set to zero. Then you have characteristics, which contain, uh, which contain flags that are that specify if the section contains uh, code, initialized data, unitialized data, uh, and the access permissions. Uh, most common flags are on the screen uh, right now. But let's put it all in practice. Uh, I found a script online that lets you print all of these data uh, from a specific uh, executable. I modified it so that it's prettier to look at. Uh, you can find both versions in the description of this video. Uh, let's specify the path. I have an executable on my desktop. It's uh, just a simple hello world, but it's not about uh, what it is. It's about it's about the uh, its parameters. So wait, hello world. .exe, all right, and I wanna print. I wanna see a DOS header. So I select one, and as you can see, we have all of this information. We have magic number five a four d which uh, is mz, which is executable.exe. Uh, what we can see, we can see empty headers. Let's type two. Here are, as you can see, all of the members of the uh, signature header, file header, and optional header. All of these members and their values are here. You can see uh, data directories here, and also you can see section headers, which are here. You have uh, your text BSS, you have your dot text, our data, data, idata, msvc, jmc, and all of the other uh, sections here. So if you wanna play with, uh, with this tool, uh, again, it's down in the description in my GitHub, it is just the code. Uh, so it is open source, you can compile it yourself, just copy paste the code to Visual Studio and uh, compile it and you're good to go. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more Windows internals videos. Leave a like, subscribe, and as always, see you soon.